Hi, it's Jeremy Shatton from An Earful. Welcome back to Discover Music with An Earful. This is monthly listening for June 2024, and we have much to discuss. It was a very busy month, especially when you consider I recorded the last episode before May 31st, when several releases came out. We have the best of 2024 so far to discuss. 25 albums that kept me coming back over and over again. Some of those even came out in June. Then there are the concerts. We will start with those. I actually only made it to three concerts, but among those three concerts, I saw 11 acts. So let's get to that right after the break. Thursday, June 13th, marked the official beginning of summer concert season for an earful when we headed out to beautiful Central Park to City Park's Summer Stage to see one of their amazing free concerts. This was quite a lineup. In my review, I called it the Central Park Mixtape because everything was so different but so interesting. Starting up was... Slossom Malone 1, who we had seen open for Crumb last year in Prospect Park. This is now the duo of Jasper Marsalis, who plays guitar, keyboards, programming, and sings and screams quite a bit. Nicholas Weatherell is on cello and really a fantastic musician who can draw equally flowing lines or arcs of distortion out of his ancient instrument. They put out an album last year called Excelsior. It's really worth checking out, but seeing them in concert is quite an experience. The audience didn't know what to expect. At least some of them didn't, and were quite moved. Next was the Sun Ra Orchestra. This is a space-age big band that's been going since the 50s, in case you're unaware. Sun Ra, the nom de guerre of one Herman Blount, who claimed to have been born on Saturn, and maybe he was, who am I to say? Right now they're being led by Marshall Allen, who played with Sun Ra for decades and is now over 100 years old. He was born the same year as my father and he was up there blowing free jazz like you wouldn't believe. The band itself was 21 or 22 members. Everyone was excellent. There were great sax solos, trumpet solos, guitar solos, drum solos. There was a conga line that weaved its way through the stage. It was just so much fun. It really captured the essence of Sun Ra's project, and I'm so glad I had a chance to see them because I I never had before. Closing the show was Kim Gordon. Believe it or not, I am not a Sonic Youth fan. I was so excited by the idea of a rock band spinning off from the Glenn Bronca Guitar Orchestra, but then it turned out I didn't like them, and I didn't like them even when they became pretty successful in the 90s. On the coattails of Kurt Cobain getting them signed to Geffen Records and that whole thing. But this Kim Gordon album is quite interesting, and I wanted to see what it would sound like live because it's such a studio creation with these trap inspired beats and heavy guitar and bass and her deadpan vocals. You know what? It delivered on stage really, really good. And that was helped by her band, young musicians who are just incredible. Camilla Charlesworth on bass was huge. The sound just resonated throughout the park. Sarah Register was on guitar and synth, just awesome, crunchy sounds. And drummer Maddie Vogt was really good because she had to navigate the electronic beats and what she was doing on the acoustic drums and was just extraordinary. Really good. I have to say some of the songs fall a little bit flat for me as songs, but When they were just making noise, they were very, very good. I'm glad I had a chance to see Kim Gordon this time around. Coming up, another park and another mixtape of music. The Summer Stage concert was included in a review recently published called Intimacies and Invocations. 
pretentious, moi, but I haven't reviewed yet the next festival I went to, which was the Emerging Music Festival. This is held every year in Bryant Park, and it is part of their picnic concert series. They have opera, they have dance, and then they have two days, which are curated by Ad Hoc, the independent concert promoter who seems to be all up in my playlist with the stuff that they're picking out most of the time. And this was no exception. Now, here's the thing. I've gone to Central Park many times for concerts, Prospect Park many times for concerts. I have never gone to a concert in Bryant Park, even though I used to spend some time there when I worked on 40th and Madison. Always a civilized spot with a table and a chair to eat your lunch at. But I had no idea how civilized they were until I went to a concert. First of all, it's completely welcoming. There's no security. You're, nobody's rummaging through your bag. Whatever water bottle you bring is fine. And I understand that Prospect Park and Central Park are doing what they got to do for those venues. But Bryant Park just has the nicest vibe. People are sitting on blankets, families are hanging out. It's just very, very chill. Now granted, it was also not as crowded as it could have been, especially on the second day. Maybe that's because it was really humid. The first day we got there and we saw Los Espliffs, who do a version of Cumbia, pretty good a lot of fun i thought it could have been a little more just single-minded they did a lot of soloing they did a lot of stops and starts but i enjoyed it quite a bit then we got to hear may simonis who has a beautiful ep out this year she is an exquisite bossa nova style guitar player and then she had two violinists with her and it really was just so lovely. Her songs get under your skin in a kind of subtle way, like you'd imagine with bossa nova influences, a bit of chamber music involved in there. Just gorgeous. She just has such a sweet voice. And the other thing that was different about Brian Park is that all the artists were hanging out by the table. You never see any of the artists when you go to Central Park, uh, unless they're in the VIP section. Just felt so democratic. They also had great food trucks. We headed over there. And even an incredibly nice bathroom with attendants. Anyway, I forgot I was in New York for a second there. The third band we saw on the first night, which was Friday, June 28th, was Chanel Beads. Your Time Will Come was featured on the podcast, their debut album, and what a great performer. Just the wild attitude Shane Lavery has. He's the main character in Chanel Beads. They drew a big crowd. People were dancing, calling out for song titles. I mean, it was wild. I think that Shane Lavery is onto something. If you have not yet listened to Chanel Beads, please give it a try. It's a very interesting blend of sounds. The second night, the opening band was At, that is the At symbol. If you remember, they were on this podcast as well. Soul Hole was the song I featured, and that was one of the highlights of their set. They are really kind of goofballs with the flute and guitars and lots of programmed music, but just a really kind of wonderfully wacky and warm attitude. Then we got to see Bloomsday, who will be featured later in this podcast. Beautiful album, Heart of the Artichoke. Just a purity of singing, purity of songwriting, really talented band. Next up was Greg Mendez, the one artist I was not familiar with at the Emerging Music Festival. Put out a really great album called Greg Mendez last year, and the lyrics that he uses are striking. There was a song called Shark's Mouth that really got me right from the start. If you want to be caught in some shark's mouth, spill a bucket of blood in the water, or take the Chinatown down to your old house and spend a lonely night up with your father. He'll deck the halls with blood red and gold. You never felt so scared to be alone. He has his sweet voice, solid folk song structures, and just delivers these devastating lines. I'm definitely going to be listening to more Greg Mendez. Next up was Hannah Jadagu, who I featured on the podcast for her debut album Aperture last year. Really great pop, psychedelic. She's adding heavier sounds in. There was like an overture at the beginning with lots of heavy guitar, almost heading into prog territory. Really delightful performer. And finally closing the show were the incredible Horse Girl. Oh my God, I love Horse Girl. And this is now the third time I've seen them. And I was amused to note Every time I've seen them, it's been outside. And I really want to see this hard rockin' band in a small, sweaty club somewhere. But every time I see them, they're outside. They are so good. They played some new songs, which featured some new melodic and sonic tricks. Can't wait to hear what they come out with next. We had a delightful time 
in Bryant Park, and the rain even held out until just the last chord was ringing out from Horse Girls' set. What a great festival Ad Hoc and Bryant Park put on together. I can't wait for next year. I don't know if they can top this one. Best festival lineup in the USA this summer, I think. When we come back, recordings. Our first recording this month comes from a fascinating artist, formerly known as Anne Lelahua Lanzalotti, now just Lelahua Lanzalotti, a native Hawaiian who is a violist, scholar, curator, educator, and a multimedia artist. I first became aware of them with the album In Manus to Us, which was in some ways a conventional portrait album, solo viola music by Anna Thorvalds Dottier, Caroline Shaw, Andrew Norman. Fantastic album. I noted that their technique was furiously virtuosic and fabulously free. This latest album, however, is another kind of debut of Leila Hua Lanzalotti as a composer slash sound artist. The title track, The Sky in Our Hands, Our Hands in the Sky, is a 46 minute plus improvisation using, as its instruments, ceramic works by the sculptor Toshiko Takezu. Some of these are located at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Really fascinating work. 46 minutes is not too long. Just put it on, let it play, let it happen. Then there are two other works, Sending Messages, performed by So Percussion, and the opening piece for Toshiko, obviously dedicated to Takezu and recorded by Longleash, the ensemble of Paula Garcia on violin, John Popham cello, and Julia Denboer of Yarn Wire on piano. We're gonna hear an excerpt from Movement 2, To Touch, and note the almost sculptural approach to the instruments. This is not conventional work in any sense of the word, but it is extraordinarily beautiful. Here is to Touch by Leilahua Lanzalotti. Wasn't that something? Leilahua Lanzalotti's For Toshiko from their album, The Sky in Our Hands, Our Hands in the Sky. Next, we have a new album from an old favorite, Scott Wolschlager, whose wonderful album, American Dream, performed by Beethoven, was my number 10 album of 2019. Incredible chamber work. Now he has a new album out, Between Breath, that just continues this exciting journey of a fantastic composer. There are four pieces on there. We're going to hear an excerpt from Violaine, which is a combination of viola and violin, which must make you think that it's performed by and play. And you would be right. The incredible duo of Hannah Levinson and Maya Bernardo, whom I've probably talked too much about on this podcast, but so what? They are that good. There's wonderful work on here for trombone and piano, and there's vocals. We have the great Lucy de Grey on here. Just incredible stuff. He really is terrific. One thing he said about this album is, let's listen to it as an album. Let's approach it as a full work. But we're just going to hear an excerpt of Violaine Part 1, which I called in my review, Jagged But High Fat. Give it a chance. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wasn't that Bracing Violin by Scott Walschlager from his album Between Breath, my number 16 album of 2024 so far. It's so great. Our next album comes from composer, pianist Corey Reeder. Sent this to me a while ago and I kept coming across it in my folder and going, can't I share this one yet? I'd listened to it quite a bit and loved it. Two long chamber works. We're going to hear an excerpt from the second one, The Way I Saw Them Turning. The name of the album is Everywhere the Truth Rushes In. The Way I Saw Them Turning is Nicole Barbeau on voice, Elena Clarice on flute, Kathleen Crabtree Viola, reader himself on piano. It is spare. It is spacious. It is somehow soulful. Very, very beautiful. Give a listen to an excerpt from The Way I Saw Them Turning. Corey Reader. Corey Reader's The Way I Saw Them Turning from his album Everywhere the Truth Rushes In. Really beautiful record. Next we have Rectangles and Circumstance, the third collaboration between composer and vocalist Caroline Shaw and So Percussion. I saw them perform their last album live and I thought, wow, they're really a band now. And that's one thing they say in the liner notes that they felt like they were a road-hardened, road-tested band who knew each other's strengths weaknesses, and tendencies. So they continued the collaboration. They wrote a lot of songs together. The song we're going to hear, however, is a traditional song, The Parting Glass. This is a 200-year-old Scottish folk song, also claimed by the Irish, I believe, notably used as the basis for Bob Dylan's early masterpiece, Restless Farewell. I kind of went down a rabbit hole with the song, Restless Farewell and The Parting Glass, when I was writing about the 60th anniversary of the times they are a change. Their arrangement, Caroline Shaw and So Percussion, it fits them like a glove. It's absolutely perfect. The mood of the song, the melody of the song, style of the song is tailor-made for Shaw's lighter-than-air soprano. There's a great dignity in the way she sings it, but also warmth. You have listen to The Parting Glass by So Percussion and Caroline Shaw from their album Rectangles and Circumstance. A fair maid in this town She surely has my heart beguiled Her rosy cheeks, her ruby lips I know she has my heart enthralled So fair Be with you all So fill me 
Wasn't that just absolutely gorgeous? Caroline Shaw, So Percussion, The Parting Glass from their album, Rectangles and Circumstance. They've become quite a thing together, haven't they? Percussion arrangements, spine tingling. Her voice sounds fantastic. We're going to take a little break here. I think it's a natural moment to take a pause with what comes next. So take a breath, and we'll be right back. And I am back. Last month I talked about Talk Ensemble's marvelous world premiere performance of Weston Olensky's When the Great Fires Were Lit on the Other Side of the Ocean. But Olensky has been busy. A recent release of two pieces by him with the title Pearls Ground Down to Powder. Really incredible. Two tracks, but each plus 20 minutes. The first one is the one that really blew my mind. It's polyrhythmic. It's a clockwork construction where the sounds overlap in so many startling and unusual ways. The rocks are different here. Here's an excerpt. saying now the rocks are different there indeed pearls ground down to powder the new album from weston olensky just another extraordinary collection of stuff now hold that in your head the olensky sound in your head and you'll hear how it relates to the next track which is by the great Susie analog a producer vocalist engineer curator educator just an electronic dance music icon I was introduced to back in 2016 when she played with Novelty Daughter, whose semi-goddess, I may remind you, is one of the best albums of the 2010s, one of the 100 best. Have you heard it yet? I don't know what you're waiting for. Semi-goddess by Novelty Daughter. But Susie Analog is still making records. And as she recently revealed on Twitter, she has never made a full-length studio project. I read that and I thought, huh, you know what? She's right. She often releases singles, and then she puts them together in these incredible compilations. The latest one may be the best yet. It is called Ones, O-N-E-Z. It consists of 12 tracks, some of which were never released. So it's getting closer to a full-length studio project. Some of these are remixes or one-off collaborations, things that appeared elsewhere but haven't been on one of her records. We're going to hear the track Changed, C-H-A-N-G-E-D-D-D. You will hear an excerpt from it and you will note 
that alongside the busy kaleidoscopic production, there's actually a pop song structure in there. And when you zero in on it, it's darn catchy. It will make you move, it will make you think. Changed by Suzy Analog. Kaleidoscopic indeed, so wonderfully busy and polyrhythmic. Susie Analog changed from the collection Ones, really is the perfect introduction to her wonderful world. Next we have another song that uses a drum machine, but very differently. This was another recommendation from Josh Terry and his wonderful substack, No Expectations. Annie Williams of Nashville, Tennessee. So you can expect some classic songwriting on here. The cover of the album shows her riding a motorcycle through a ring of fire. I think she's trying to say that she's brave. And she does have bravery in the way she investigates incidents of the past and tries to understand what happened to her as a younger person sometimes. In this song, Visitor, she says, I showed up at your door, provoking unearned scorn. I always seem to ruin your day. I always seem to get in your way. I was so young. Yeah. I think we've all been there. The song is just absolutely beautiful with a kind of hymnal chord change to it. She plays all the instruments on it, or most of them, electric guitar, synth, piano, drums. Just a wonderful song. Her voice is so natural and refreshing. Beautiful singer. This is the title track of Annie Williams' debut album, Visitor. Hear it now. beautiful annie williams from her debut album visitor the whole album is that good it actually was around this time when i was editing the tracks my wife was sitting next to me and she goes are you doing the top 25 now i'm like no but these albums are so good and that includes the next one Leica songs this was one i found out through the rosie overdrive discord we have a self-promotions tab in there, and Evan Brock, who performs as Leica Songs, mentioned that he had a new album out. I gave it a listen, and I was super impressed. Excellent songwriting, beautifully produced, 
by Evan himself. And he's got great musicians on here. People who play with Vampire Weekend, Faye Webster, Angel Olsen. These are the cream of the crop. But it really comes down to the songs. And Evan himself plays guitar, bass, piano, organ, mellotron, synthesizer, harmonica, and percussion. Deeply involved in recording this stuff and then letting the others add their own special twist to each song. We are going to hear an excerpt from The Glow from Like a Song's new album, Slowly Spiraling Towards the Light. The Glow by Leica Songs from their latest album, Slowly Spiraling Towards the Light. And that's Leica, L-A-I-K-A, like the first dog in space. Be the first one on your block to listen to this album. It's really good. Next, we have the latest of many, many releases from Nate Amos under the name This Is Lorelei. Amos is the guitarist, keyboard player, programmer, producer for Water From Your Eyes, his wonderful collaboration with Rachel Brown. Their album Everyone's Crushed was on my top 25 last year. Just an all-timer. And this new album is very different from Water From Your Eyes. The first song is a country weeper that would not be unfamiliar to Neil Young or even Hank Williams. And then you have auto-tuned dance tracks, just a whole lot of variety on here. And the song we're going to hear is called A Song That Sings About You. And it's sort of a perfect AM radio classic rock track. I could hear it on a KTEL compilation, but one of the good songs on the KTEL compilation. It really is great. The, the hook is just going to get into you. So be prepared. This is A Song That Sings About You by This Is Lorelei. I just got off an aeroplane, I said, Jesus Christ, not this again, I said, all these cities look the same without you, they look the same without you, I can't tell what the streets I say, they just point at me and laugh at me and they Tease me dreams of every day I held you These streets remind me of you And I don't know where my past has been But my future's been here all along It's a galaxy that sings to me about you The stars all sing about you Wasn't that just perfect? A song that sings about you by This Is Lorelei from their album, A Box for Buddy, A Box for Star. Excellent album all around. Next we have Rui Gabriel and their album, 
compassion. This is a really well-crafted record with just a sunny disposition to it. The song we're going to hear is called Target, and I think you'll find it kind of insidious how the hook gets into you. It's so good. The whole album is great. It sometimes reminded me a little of Corner Shop and their classic When I Was Born for the Seventh Time. Just has that kind of easiness, simplicity, and beauty that just makes you fall in love with it. We'll give a listen to Target by Rui Gabriel. I compromise Things to agree about Cause I'm a fool for your affection And so devout to your own That just great target by Rui Gabriel. The female vocalist on the song is Kate Teague. She sings on a few songs and is really great. The album is called Compassion. It's a debut album. And the next album we have is also a debut. This is Bloomsday and their album Heart of the Artichoke, centered around the singing and songwriting of Iris James Garrison. It's just a wonderful album. And I talked about them earlier in the show because we got to see them live and they were so great. I want you to hear a little bit of Where I End and You Begin, the opening track on Heart of the Artichoke, the debut album from Bloomsday. And You Begin by Bloomsday from their debut album, The Heart of the Artichoke. A really great album. And there's a fun song on here called Dollar Slice. When they played it live, they mentioned that they had single-handedly brought the Dollar Slice back to New York City. Now, while I'm not sure that's true, I will say that it's a great song and a Dollar Slice is a great thing to have on hand when you need it. Recently, there's been a lot of discussion about octogenarians and their cognitive abilities and productivity. Uh, I can't remember exactly why, but one argument in their favor is John Cale. The man is 82 years old, and when we saw him in Prospect Park last year, he was absolutely incredible. 
delivered a stunning performance, absolutely engaged. And the songs on the album he was promoting, Mercy, sounded even better in concert. And now we have a new album from him, Poptical Illusion. This is actually on my top 25 of the year so far. It may be one of my favorite John Cale albums. Granted, I'm sort of a recent convert to his solo work. I, I never fully delved into it until a couple of years ago. It's just a terrific album all around. It sounds completely contemporary. It's produced in a style I would call post-punk classicism. His partner, his production partner, Nita Scott and Kale made all the sounds themselves. And the songs are terrific. And we're going to hear an excerpt from Davis and Wales, which may be as perfect a pop song as John Cale has ever produced even compared to Spinning Away from Wrong Way Up, his collaboration with Eno that has recently started getting some of its due. Give a listen to Davis and Wales from Poptical Illusion by John Cale. that just great davis and wales by john kale from his 18th solo album poptical illusion number 18 on my list of the top 25 albums of the year so far one thing i noted in my review is that it's a much more hopeful sounding album than mercy the rather sinuous sensuous and slightly murky album he came out with in 2022 i like that album a lot too but poptical illusion is really hitting me where i live this year it's so good. Speaking of the top 25, I'll give a quick rundown of the top 10. Count them down for you. You can find the entire post on nearful.substack.com and learn what albums have been really giving me what I need this year. Number 10 was No Glory by H. Prues, Hannah Prasinski, again, a series of organically crafted songs featuring delicately intertwining guitars, piano, vocals, clarinet, and cello. The album also includes a wealth of unexpected details that seem to be direct transmissions from the instincts of the players. Great songs, great singing. Number nine, Frico, Where We've Been, Where We Go From Here, an extraordinary range of sounds from gnashing, gnarling guitars and pounding pianos to delicate string-laden chamber folk it's a fully rounded album made by and for musical omnivores number eight arushi jane delight the result is an utter triumph that sounds completely effortless excellent electronic music just so good number seven talia ensemble and the harlem chamber players julius eastman feminine it manages to channel the pioneering spirit of the 1974 live recording within a sleeker stunningly engineered context that hits all the marks for a contemporary Eastman record. Number six, Darning Woman by Anastasia Koop. Koop's approach to songwriting, singing, and production results in obdurate creations that seem to exist out of time. They could be playground chants from a hidden society or transmissions from another world. Number five, More Mother, The Great Bailout. Dark history calls for a dark telling, and on this often pitch black album, More Mother delves into and dissects the British role in the slave trade. It's extraordinary. Number four, Or Best Offer, Center. Or Best Offer is one of those bands that put aside the conventions of music to tap into its primordial power. Number three, Michael Hirsch, Papea. Typically for Hirsch, he zeroes in without hesitation on very modern themes of trauma, resilience and self-actualization. His longtime collaborator, the genius soprano, 
Ah Young Hong puts in her finest, most concentrated performance, which is saying something. It's just incredible. Number two, Faye Webster underdressed at the symphony. On her fifth album, Webster doubles down on her sublime combo of bulletproof hooks, lush production, and lyrics that slalom through wry, witty, and vulnerable poles like a gold medal Olympian. And number one, Cindy Lee, Diamond Jubilee. When I included a track from this sprawling masterpiece in my A Song for Friday series, I noted that from the first listen I was captivated by Patrick Flegel's mastery of a variety of song forms. From 50s soda shop pop to 60s jangle and velvety hypnotics to icy 80s post-punk, 90s dance funk to 21st century indie rock and beyond. It's a celebration and homage to the power and glory of rock and roll. I hope the fact that this album is only available on YouTube or Flagel's GeoCities site hasn't kept you from its many, many wonders. It's an incredible album. Everybody I play it for is blown away. It really is something you should hear. And that concludes this episode of Discover Music with an Earful. Thank you for listening to Monthly Listening for June 2024. I hope you found something new to love. I hope you'll look at the whole top 25 and let me know what you think. If I introduced you to something new, tell me and tell a friend. All the music you heard has been ethically sourced from the artists and labels. Many thanks to them. Find links to those and everything else discussed in the show notes, which also includes a Spotify playlist. The interstitial tracks are by me, circa 1984 to 1986, with Andy Gilchrist on occasional guitar. Thanks, as always, to The Droplets, Holly Miranda, Am Parsley, and Chris Maxwell for my theme song. Find me at anearful.substack.com and all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Please share, rate, and review this podcast. That's the only way we can continue growing this movement to reveal the finest music of our time. See you next month. Thanks for listening. Music to